Hello and welcome. Olive is a great video editor for beginners and advanced users. It performs quite well and is very stable. Let's try making a simple video project. Let's try out a lot of features to see how it actually works. Please subscribe to help me make these videos. I'm going to start by dragging in some files. There's a logo file in there. There is an image file in here, a photo. There are three videos, one audio file. Now they're all in the project area and I'm going to start with the video, which I want to use as the basis for the video that should come out of it. So if you have a weirdly shaped video like this particles 4 k ish video that is a bit strangely stretched, I will not drag this first. Otherwise, the video will be like this. Super wide. I don't actually want that. It created a new sequence over here, so I'm going to just delete this. Instead, I'm going to drag this file in here. That's uh, the shape I want the video to have. I'm going to control mouse wheel zoom out in the timeline to see more. And here is the video. I'm going to drag in this clip as well and this one as well. And we can move single clips around by clicking and dragging. We can also multi select clips and drag them around together by drawing a rectangle around them and then clicking and dragging one of them. This clip is way too long. It needs to be shortened. There are three basic editing methods for this. The absolute beginner method is to use this tool, the razor tool. You click on it or you press C for slightly more advanced users on the keyboard and then you click where you want to cut the video or split it. Then you can press V or click on this tool, right click on clips you don't need anymore and delete. That looks like this. Or if I just undo this with Ctrl Z, you can ripple delete and it automatically moves the gap that gets created. So I'm going to ripple delete this as well. So using this tool is the first method. The second method is to hover over the left or right end of a clip and clicking and dragging. But the best method, in my opinion, is to click where you want the clip to start and then press the Q key on the keyboard and then click on the timeline where you want the clip to end and press W on the keyboard. And this automatically deletes the parts that you don't need. I'm just going to right click on this empty space and ripple delete it. Let's zoom in and actually delete some more. And let's take a look at the result. We got some space. We got some sports and we got something uh, nicely visually animated. This clip, by the way, has a huge resolution. Let's try scaling it down. We can do so simply here. And if we scale it down too much, we get black borders. Let's just scale it down to, yeah, 58 is good. We can also change the position since it's kind of all the same. Why not? We can also do this with the other clips. Yeah, actually, this clip is bigger than the first one we inserted. And this one, I'm actually going to zoom in. And I'm going to move it so that the logo disappears. We're going to look at the bottom left part of this video. Down is the now let's make transitions between these video clips. Remember that we cut off parts of each of these videos on the left and right. Actually, I'm not sure we did this for this one. Let's just drag the parts of this clip to different tracks and see. Yeah, we cannot extend it. So this one will not work. It's a good demonstration for how transitions don't work. You use the transition tool or press T and then you select cross dissolve, the currently only official transition supported. There will probably be more later. And if you try to drag, it doesn't work. You have to have loose frames at the end and beginning of both clips. What this basically means, we need to click here and press Q and here as well and press W. And now we have spare frames. So now let's click and drag here to get a transition between these two clips, as we can see here. For some reason, for these two clips, it doesn't work. I don't know the reason yet. So let's remove that for now. Instead, what we can also do is use the cross dissolve to fade to black. So if we hover not the center of this cut, but to the right or left, we can click and drag, and then they fade to black and from black. Right, so much for transitions between clips. There's also some audio here we can transition between. There's some voice and noise and here's silence. So let's use the transition tool and pick exponential fade. And now we can hover this audio clip, click and drag and let's listen into that. Very nice and soft. All right, let me just zoom in with control mouse wheel and I'm going to add an image now. I'm just going to drag this to here and I'm going to drag all of these to this area and I'm just going to resize this in the timeline, drag it down 
And here it is. And it is a huge image. So let's scale it down. And let's drag it not by the center, but somewhere on the surface of the image, just click and drag and we see her face. And I'm also going to add transitions to the background to black over here. We can also use this cursor pointer tool to change the duration of these transitions. So if we want it to fade really slowly, we can drag it long. If we want it to fade really quickly, we can drag it short. Now let's add some music. I've got a music file over here. I'm going to drag it to the second audio track, which gets created as I release. I think I want the audio to start there. So I'm just going to cut it there and drag it to the left. Let's listen in. Okay, first of all, the music is way too loud. Let's change it by clicking the clip of the music and changing volume to, no, that's way too high, minus 12. If you were to combine this with voiceover, you would usually use at least minus 18, in my opinion. I'm just going to cut off the rest with W and I'm going to drag it to the end. And I want this to not be heard. So I'm actually going to remove this fade. And to mute this clip, we can do various things. We can, for example, click on this clip and scroll down and set volume to infinity minus dB. That works. We can also right click this clip, link unlink, and then click somewhere else and click on the audio clip only. And now we can right click enable disable to just disable it. Or we can just click it and delete it. That also works. Let's actually just unlink these. We can also use Control L for that. And now I'm going to multi select these and delete them and move the music track above. And you know what? We could have actually done all of this without doing any of that by simply dragging the music on top of it. That would have done it as well. I don't want the music to fade in, but I do want it to fade out. So let's add transition, exponential fade to the end. Now, some people like to have video in video by putting video on another track. This is, for example, for commentary on video games when they record their face as well as the game. You can do that here. You can simply scale down the clip. You can also add an effect, for example, distort crop. If your face is on a certain side of the screen, you can just cut it off on, for example, the right side. Maybe the left as well. And then you can just drag it around. Let's put it over here. Sure, why not? And let's add some transitions for good measure. Cross dissolve in and cross dissolve out. And as you can see, it will fade to the background, not to black in this case. We can do the same with an image file. For example, a logo, we can just stretch it to the entire duration of the video. And we can resize it as we like. We can also use these handlebars to do so visually and then just click and drag it to wherever it should be. And for this one, I would set opacity to 50%, 30%. Let's go for 10%. That'll be a watermark for this video. Let's put it somewhere less visible over here. Also, let's resize all of this so we have more space for the video preview. Looking good. Now you probably saw the video lag right there. There. This should not happen in the end result, but the preview sometimes get a bit laggy. I think the color here is a bit blonde. Let's give it an effect. Let's give it a color effect. In video effects, on this button, we can add some color correction, for example. This adds a new section over here, color correction. I'm going to make transform small so we don't have to see that. And we can change things like temperature or right click and reset to default. We can change tint to get crazy results. We can change the exposure to make stuff brighter. But I really don't like this light in the background. So let's reset that. We can change contrast. That might be a good idea. Highlights. Whoa, that's too much. 
and shadows. Oh yeah, saturation is probably the best thing for this clip. So let's set it to 150. We can click and drag or click it to enter a manual value. There's still this lagging. That's annoying, but I'm sure it won't be there in the end result. Yeah, so this helps this video, I think, a lot, actually. Uh, this one, yeah, this also could use some correction. Let's add maybe the other one, the hue, saturation, brightness one. I don't know why we have color correction here. Hue, saturation, brightness. Color correction. Strange, we must have added it by accident somehow. Maybe we had two clips selected. Uh, color correction, I'm going to remove that. And we're going to change the saturation and the brightness and the hue to make it look weirdly spacey. Yeah, let's do it like this. Now this one is definitely editable. We can add color, hue, saturation, brightness, and just play around with the hue because this is pretty much monochrome. Yeah, this is fun. Let's give it a little more greenish matrixy feel. All right, so now let's add some titles to this video. There is this very thin bar we can move so we see more video track space and less audio track space. We can also move this whole area down move this to the left again. And now we're going to use this tool over here to add a title. We can just click and drag in the timeline to create a new clip. And here is the title with the sample text enabled. We can click on the clip to get this interface where we can change the text. Or we can click edit text and type it in here. Or live to edit. Har har har. And we can select it to change the font as well. We can click or drag the text size and press OK. And we can, of course, change the font. Just select everything with Control A. Use this drop down menu. All right, we're going to roll with that. So now we have this text on the screen. And it just cuts out. Instead, we can animate it. Let's use keyframes for that. We're going to click on title and we're going to make it appear out of nowhere from the center of the screen, and then it will appear over the duration of half a second, or a bit less actually, and then it will be like this. So we're gonna go to the absolute beginning of this title clip, and we're gonna enable keyframes using this icon here, and we're gonna set it to zero. Now we're gonna move on the timeline to about one third of a second, and we're gonna change the scale to 100. Let's click somewhere else so we don't see these outlines. All right, I like that. We can also make this animation slower. Let's just zoom in here by dragging this. We can simply drag this keyframe to one second and then it will take one second for this animation to finish. Nice. And now we're gonna actually not make it scale away or cut away, we're gonna make it flip away. I'm just gonna extend this a little. And what I mean by that, it's going to fly out of the screen. For that, it's going to change the position. So let's enable keyframes for that. And it's going to change its rotation. So let's enable keyframes for that. And now let's jump to the end of this clip. I'm going to press down keyboard, left keyboard key for that. Now we are in the last visible frame for this clip. And I'm going to set rotation to some, I think that's three, four rotations. And position we're going to change by simply dragging it outside of a screen so we don't see it anymore. And if we play this back now... Oof, that was a bit too harsh, too fast. Let's uh, select these keyframes, move them a bit back. It's gonna be slower now. A bit weird and... yeah. Okay, let, you know what, let's actually jump to the final keyframe and make the rotation less aggressive. Two rotations ought to do the job. Yeah, that, that looked much better. Let's just make sure that it really disappears out of the screen. Last check. All right, we're reaching the end, but I want to add another title at the end. Let's just copy this 
and right click paste in here. Sorry about that. Let's control Z that. We actually have to set the playhead where we want it to paste. Right click paste. And now we're going to drag it to be at the exact end. And we're just going to remove the end keyframe because we don't want it to move in the end. It's just going to stay. So now it looks like this. But instead of zooming in, I want it to move into the screen. So I'm just going to disable these keyframes. I'm going to disable the rotation keyframes. I don't need these. Instead, I'm going to set scale to, let's just right click, reset to default. And let's set the position to somewhere on the left of the screen. And uh, now we're gonna go about one second to the right and we're gonna set a keyframe here. Hmm, I think we might have a problem here. Let's just disable keyframes again and enable them again. Okay, now we have a keyframe. Just gonna jump to the beginning, keyboard key up. And I'm gonna set a keyframe here, gonna jump to this one. And here I'm just gonna right click, reset to default the position X value. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is what I wanted. So now let's just replace the text and hope it still fits. Here is the text field, edit text, subscribe for great justice. I don't even know if I understand the reference. Here we go. Mm, yeah, it's still outside the frame, so that's good. All right, subscribe for great justice. Last thing we're gonna do is export the video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel though, and make sure to give this video a like if it was useful, and ask any questions you might have in the comments of this video. Many of my videos are based on people asking me questions. So we are in the export area now, and here I highly recommend you set quality to 20 or lower, because if you keep your mouse hovered over this area, you can see that zero is lossless, which I do not recommend. Even five I do not recommend, because that makes the video very slow to play back. And 51 is the worst quality possible. Let me show you what happens if you use 51 for exporting. I'm just going to hit export, go to a folder, and I'm going to call this 510 oh no, and save. And let's wait for it to export. Here it is. Lovely. As an, oh, 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 so bad. So if you are into glitch art, that is for you. If you are not, don't use 51. But hey, the file size is less than one megabyte for a 15 seconds video. But seriously, let's go to File, Export. You will notice that the quality has been reset. I recommend a value of 20. Let's press Export, pick a file name, press Save or hit Enter, and wait for the progress bar to finish before you upload the video. As I said, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if it was useful. And I love hearing from people watching my videos in the comments. Let me know if there's something you still want to know about this piece of software. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, ciao!